Marketer of the Day, Episode 640, Social Media Business Strategy, Branded Content, and LinkedIn Trends with Content Coach Marissa Kelly. Hey everyone and welcome back to the Marketer of the Day podcast. We're chatting with Marissa Kelly from allthesocial.com and Marissa is a social media strategist She's a content coach with a background in digital marketing, and she has a really good eye for graphic design. And she is the person to talk to if you're looking to market on LinkedIn, if you care about personal branding, which you should, and so much more. So, Marissa, glad to be talking to you. Glad to talk to you, too. Thank you for having me on. You're very welcome. So what it makes you unique and what has been your focus lately? Um, yeah, so, uh, well, what makes me unique, there's a lot of things, but um, I have about 12 years of experience in digital marketing. So I have the ability to um, see the big picture when it comes to, you know, kind of figuring out what the needs are of the client and making sure that the tasks that are implemented or whatever, what type of strategy we come up with um, aligns with their goals. So um, I love right now. I love working with uh, B2B businesses, startup founders, uh, basically people that are, you know, focused so much on their business and growing that. And I'm really uh, passionate about, you know, other people kind of going for their dreams um, and starting businesses. Um, But a lot of times they don't have time to keep up with trends in social media or what's the newest feature of LinkedIn or, um, you know, maybe they don't have uh, any strategy on how to get on video and be very consistent. So what I'm working on right now is a lot of um, personal branding and working with small businesses that have small teams that they can utilize their team to be able to push the message of the business. So I'm really focused on that lately. And um, it's really fun because I'm teaching people how to use social, but also being able to create content that works for them and is informative and uh, thought provoking. So. Sounds like a lot of fun. And and yeah. I can definitely, uh, and it seems like there, there's a lot of that aspect of like, there's always new features on whatever platform, and there's a lot to keep up on. And then there's also that aspect of, it, it's hard for some people to, to force themselves to be vain in a way, right? Like you see, right. so, some people have their social media really dialed in, and then sometimes we like we might see it and try to duplicate that, but then mm-hmm. be like, well, am I am I doing the the right thing? Am I sending out the right message? And maybe it, sometimes it helps to have that person from the outside looking in to say, here's some ideas, here's the features you should use, here's the kind of videos and images you should post. So mm-hmm. that way, it's like from a from what the outside wants to see instead of what we're just guessing, right? Right, and I think um, you know people, I think. And and I call myself a content coach sometimes because people are so, like you said, like they're so trying to be like someone else. And it's really when you're in person and you're talking to someone, whether even like on the phone, you can hear the cadence in someone's voice and you understand like, you know, their passion, you kind of weed people out that way. But like just making sure that that's consistent as well online. Because you can't have one presence online, which is almost non-existent or fake and like stock photos and like not your face or not your personality, what you wouldn't say. And then, you know, in person be something else because it just won't ever meet up like there will never be a match. And so maintaining and like establishing one, the first, you know, online credibility, but also maintaining that and making sure that your message and everything that you're putting out there is consistent um, with trends on social. Like people are putting hashtags on Facebook still. And I'm like, "Hmm, I don't know if that works, you know, Um, and maybe it does for them, but just with trends, that's not where where it's at. You know what I mean? So um, that's just one example of things that I, you know, when they come to me, they're like, I need social media. And I'm like, okay, well, first let's, like figure out what you're at right now and where you need to go. And that's what I help with. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. It's kind of like I take my car into the mechanic. I don't learn all the stuff about maintaining my car because I have other things to do. And so if Mm -hmm. maybe people at one point, they might have gone to some conference and picked up that, oh, I should drop hashtags on Facebook. But maybe that was 
in back in 2010 and, and you right. know, now things have changed and so instead of having to keep up on everything it seems easier to just have that person look at what they're, what's going on and then say do this 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 and then mm -hmm. I, I can also relate a lot to what you mentioned there about how sometimes there's a disconnect when someone very carefully crafts their online character and then you meet them in a person and they're completely different and i'm like well i like your character better than the person that that i met and then yeah. and then maybe if they're having some difficulty with just you know with the joint venturing with the networking maybe they need something that's a little more matched up and so right. you meant you mentioned that you are a content coach and so what does that exactly entail um, I mean, it's just like you said, like uh, I can allude it to the mechanic analogy or someone that's, you know, maybe training them on how to be better with fitness, like what works for them. So in this sense, a content coach is someone who's coaching them on and, and I'm using the word coaching, but I'm not technically a coach, um, but that I'm coaching them on what type of content would be great for what their goals are. So a lot of People that I work with, they're um, well-established businesses. They have busy. They're working on busy uh, or big deals in terms of partnerships and stuff like that. But they don't have. They don't know what they need to share online because they don't want to talk about their employees or they don't want to. You know, they're sitting in an office that's like kind of. <laughs> you know, they're busy with their heads down with the work, right? And so can they be a resource for the industry and people know, okay, they know what they're talking about. And so we share thought provoking content or we, you know, we show behind the scenes of the, of the company and we utilize. So I'm, it basically really just depends on what the goals are and what type of content can, and what platform it goes on. So a lot of times people think, okay, like I want to share, you know, these top three things of content, but then they post them only on Facebook. And none of their partnerships or none of the people that they're looking to to work with, you know, none of their business contacts are on Facebook or they're not looking for that on Facebook. So we say, OK, let's move it over to LinkedIn or YouTube or, you know, you need to have a live show maybe on Instagram or Facebook. You know, what is how I'm kind of coaching you which platform to use so that you can focus on that platform and then expand possibly if you expand your team or you want to hire like someone that is there every day. Um, so that's kind of where, where I look at my role fitting in in these businesses because I'm able to, like I said, see the big picture, and figure out where we need to go. Right. So if, if they're just dabbling with it and figuring it out, they're going to have inconsistent results. And then you're saying, well, I can see the big picture you need to do this, 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 hire this person to handle that full time. And so mm -hmm. when when people are, are coming to you with uh, for your help, is it usually this kind of situation like you just mentioned where they say, I, I want to share a few things. They say, I have some idea. Like, do, do they really know what their goals are or do they have some of the raw materials or just like what's kind of the starting point usually when you're dealing with someone and getting their content figured out? Um, I think I would say 50, 50 of the people that come to me know what their goals are. Um, so a lot of it is, you know, really just strategizing, um, for the ones who don't know their goals, you know, it's, it becomes like a business strategy, like with, when it relates to social conversation, because let's not work on the content and creating all these videos. If you don't know what you want them to do after looking at that video. Like, are you providing information or are you trying to be, are you doing marketing 80% and then sales 20% or are you doing hundred percent sales? Cause for me, I'm a marketer. So I'm going to be focusing on marketing content and marketing strategy. Um, and sometimes it's not a fit depending on what their goals are because they'll look at the immediate ROI after posting maybe two or three times in a month. Um, no, you kind of have to do, you know, some consistent con content, analyze what's working. What are people responding to? And then we decide, do we adjust the strategy after a couple months? Or are we focusing on one platform? We know that's where people are going. That's where our target audience is. We're going to get leads from there. Let's do that. So 
you know, sometimes the conversation turns into a business strategy. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but that I think is what makes me unique because I will not, I will not force a company to start putting out content right away and start creating all this content if we don't know what the goals are first. Because then, then you're just throwing stuff at the wall and hope, hope that it sticks. <laughs> <laughs> and even even worse than that, you're they're throwing stuff at the wall and hoping that it sticks and not even really having a good way of measuring it if it if it even is sticking. So it's like you're you have a throwing itself at the wall, plus you have a blindfold on, so you don't even know if it hit the wall. Right, right exactly. And a lot of the pe- people that I've that come across is they don't know what they're measuring too. You know, like the, if they're putting out some social stuff online and they see oh the reach is good. Okay, well, what is the reach for you? You know, is it is that what you want? Like, do you want just people to see it? And are you sharing content that you just want to reach people? Or are you trying to, like, get people clicks or get clicks back to your website? You know, and is the content, does the content include clicks to your website? Or is it just like, you know, content with no call to action? I mean, there's a lot of different ways and strategies we can implement and that really just depends on the type of business and what they're hoping to accomplish using social media yeah that's a a a lot of really good many lessons in there of how important it is to know what those goals you have are and know what you're measuring and knowing what you'd be happy with measuring because i mean i i see this every once in a while i'll see someone just post a ton to youtube they'll post to youtube every single day for two months and then I'll see the views say like no views, no views, one view, and then the videos will be okay, but I can just tell they just cranked out a bunch of stuff really quick. And I'm right. thinking, I mean, I'm not not sure what, what I think about that. And then I'll also see maybe they, they're wearing like the exact same clothes in every <laughs> single one. So I'm like, okay, so they didn't even really think much of it through. They didn't adjust based on what people reacted to, like you were mentioning before. They just said, well, I'm gonna outline just this whole big list of stuff. I'm going to just knock it all out. And, and then and then they wonder why that why not much came of it, because they didn't have much of that strategy. They didn't really right. think things through. And then which is like, it's you know, it's OK to to uh, to play around. But if all you're doing is playing around, then you're not really going to know what how that's coming back to your business. Yeah. And and I I'm my own case study because <laughs> I did the same thing. You know, I was like, hey, I have a breadth of knowledge, like, a, a, you know, I've been in marketing or in digital marketing since 2007. And I hid behind a logo, you know, and I, I never showed myself, I didn't go on live, I didn't post videos, people didn't hear me talk about my expertise or anything. And so I was just expecting people to know that because of my resume, so to say, or whatever. And it wasn't until I was out in front of people and had a strategy and not posting, you know, just every platform all the time, three times a day, you know, when I was more strategic, that's when it started uh, working better for me. And, you know, I mean, I think we're all marketers, I think are all guilty of this. They work in the business, like on, you know, client work and stuff like that. And that's their focus, because that's what brings in the money. But then they're not focusing on their own own personal branding, their own marketing, you know? So I can tell you that it's worked for me. So, and, you know, I can, I work with a lot of one, you know, entrepreneurs that are just starting up to, or people that have very small teams. So they understand that it's important to get their message out there in the early stages, um, just to help it spread, you know? And a lot of times people think, well, I should be putting that out and I should be getting a sale or I should be getting new clients. But that, you know, sometimes it takes a while for people to trust you and want to work with you. So, you know, it's not that quick. So. Yeah, sometimes people need to be warmed up for sure. And, and I think that, we, I think we've all gone, gone through a few iterations of what you described there mm-hmm. of maybe like h- hiding ourselves or hiding behind the logo or not being sure like, you know, what what to post, what to say, how to act, how often to do things. and then. And, and it seems like from you describing your stories here is that how it's important to have the, that feedback, yeah. right? Because, mm-hmm. because it's easy for us to say, well, I'm going to have a real uh, polished looking website and I'm going to have everything that I put out to be really just very, very corporate But then 
like who's going to care about that and then mm -hmm. and then maybe you might go the other direction and be too casual and just kind of figure out what your your fit in, in there is based on just how people react and what comes back to you so right. you say that you're uh you're a content coach and you help these uh these like ceos and you know people in startups to have their their message out do you mm -hmm. have any fun case studies or stories like this where you, you came to someone and there was sort of the before picture and you worked your magic and there's the after picture? Yeah, um, I'm still working with them, but I work with a nonprofit and they're a startup nonprofit based out of Los Angeles. And they um, their uh, business is called Tent Hut. Um, and it's a nonprofit that's supposed to um, establish an uh, a program for transitioning veterans. Um, and so this is a veteran that is about to get out of the service and enter civilian life. Um, and right now there's just a lot of disjointed services available and there's, um, they get out and then they're kind of lost and they end up drifting. So, um, when I came into contact with them, it was like August of last year, their website was not built out. Um, their social media channels were basically not um, existent. Um, but now um, at this point, you know, and maybe after like a month of working on their website and um, setting up their profiles and kind of implementing some, some content that was like value based, um, they were able to kind of streamline their messaging so that when they went and presented in person on they did pitches and stuff like that, it was a lot more, it was clearer for their vision, right? And they had uh, not only myself, but a few other people that are involved with a mentoring program that I'm part of. Uh, it's called Focus Mentoring. And um, they were able to, in, I think it was end of October or early November, they, they won a pitch competition. Um, and that was you know, I helped with the messaging and kind of like the strategy when it came to what their what their content should be about. And I'm still working with them and I'm proud we're doing regular monthly events and um, we're looking to actually get an office in L.A. now. It was all remote before. So, you know, the progression of the the nonprofit itself has really been, you know, amazing. Oh, we also do a podcast like so there's so we thought, okay, we're going to put a bunch of content on, on Instagram or we're going to put a put bunch of content on Facebook, but that wasn't where we could really tell stories of the veterans that were aiming to help and build through the nonprofit. So the podcast was something that um, I helped produce, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't my idea originally, but I helped pr produce it and get it out on social and share it and stuff like that. So um, it's been really great to work with them because you see the progression of utilizing social to push their message and how far we've grown in in six months, seven months. I don't know how long um, I've been. It was August, so it's like almost a year, maybe. I guess <laughs> it's just easier to say almost a year. Um, but yeah, it's that's just one example, and um, I think you know when it's a purpose-driven business, I, it, I end up being more passionate about or, you know, more into that because it's, you know, well, one, it's veterans is a very uh, close, it's a thing that's close to my heart. Um, and I've always been, uh, those things have always been important to me as I, as I've grown up and in San Diego and stuff like that. So it's been an amazing, amazing journey with them. So. Awesome. Sounds very yeah. fulfilling. Yeah. So, so as we're kind of winding our conversation down here, sure. With all of your all the things that you see with you being dialed into all the, the social media and with all of your consulting, would you say are there one or two things that we could all just really take to heart one or two pieces of advice that we could apply to our own social media that just maybe like uh, one or two mistakes you keep seeing happening that we all just need to avoid right away? Yeah. Um, wow. That's uh, one or two. Um, um, let's see. Give me one second. Sorry. Um, one or two things. So I think um, one of the things and um, I think we need to hopefully um, really focus on and that's I think we've been saying it. Marketers have been saying it for a couple of years is video. So what your video strategy is and that's part of your social strategy because you're putting your video out on social 
um, is, you know, really not trying not to avoid that anymore, uh, whether it's a live show on your page or it's a, um, you know, regular weekly videos that kind of tell behind the scenes. Um, there's different ways to convey that. You could also do YouTube. Um, YouTube is like the second largest search engine, obviously, because it's um, affiliation with Google. So really just figuring out, um, you know, a video strategy and somehow getting in front of people that way. And I wouldn't think too much about the production um, because that will come with time. But just really figure out how can you be in front of people besides just posting static content, you know, because people want to see you and hear you. Um, and then the second one would be, you know, to if you are a B2B business is to definitely get on LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is right now, according to HubSpot, it's a 277 percent better at leads than Twitter and Facebook. So if you're looking for, if you're in the B2B space, especially, um, you need to be on LinkedIn. So um, that's, and, and what, what you post on LinkedIn, you know, that's obviously a bigger conversation. What are your goals? What's your business like? You know, stuff like that. So it's hard for me to generalize. But if you are not on LinkedIn and you are a B2B business, I would say start investing time in doing your research or you know, talking to people that are experts about LinkedIn so that you can um, level up your, your presence there. Those are two things. Well, those are two really good pieces of advice, and especially because if, if you remember, I mean, 10 years ago, if you were to put a video on, on YouTube, it would take half the day, right? It'd take half the day yeah. with, with your, your flip camera and you have to record it and it wouldn't store that much information, that long of a video. And you have to transfer it and you have to upload, you have to wait for it to mm -hmm. process. But times have definitely changed. Now you just take out your phone, click the button, send it off. Mm -hmm. And you can even, you know, edit the, edit the video on your phone and do all that fancy stuff. And mm -hmm. so th there's no excuse anymore for trying to get this the right equipment, like you said, that can come with time. Mm -hmm. uh, just click the button, get it on there and and go about the rest of your day, especially because a lot of these other marketers, business owners, they're all they all have access to the same easy technology too so if you right. him and ha and, and if you t take six months to let yourself get worked up to it or get around to it then mm -hmm. by that time someone else has posted that that one once a week live show or whatever mm -hmm. so the 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 ease of use is there but the competition is there as well so right. we all have to keep up and then linkedin that's a really great reminder for me too because there was there's a handful of prospects that i'm kind of following up with like mm -hmm. everywhere like on on facebook through the postal mail sending out emails sending out personal one-on-one -on -one videos and on my list was to look them up on linkedin sometimes i use like that that paid option where i can do mm -hmm. the the more advanced stuff and so that was on my list and that's a really good reminder of something that we need to do more of so more yeah. video more linkedin uh, really great advice and a lot of things okay. to for us to think about today. And I want to make sure that everyone has your information. And if they liked what they heard today from you and they, they said, well, well, she has a lot of uh, great information and Marissa has a lot of uh, advice for all of us to use. Where can they look you up, get in touch with you and find all that cool stuff? Sure. Yeah, thank you. Um, and just before I share that, I want, you know, you did say something about leveling the playing field. And that's so true because you know, advertisements on the freeway cost a lot of money and there's very scarce amount of advertising space, you know, anywhere when you're looking at, it. but now social media, you kind of, you have the opportunity to put your message out there. It's your time, but it's still, you know, it's still a level, level playing field um, to get your message out there. So that's a really good point uh, that you brought up. So anyways, um, if you want to connect with me, you can connect with me on, I'd prefer on LinkedIn, um, but I'm on all the social media um, platforms under all the social. Um, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, you can go to linkedin.allthesocial.com and it'll take you right to my profile. You can hit connect or send me a message. Um, and then my website is allthesocial.com and um, I have all my links there too. And I do have a, I do have a, a um, five tips to help you with your platform on LinkedIn. And that is also on my website. Um, and it's all the social.com slash LinkedIn. So you can go and uh, get that 
um, get that download from my website. So if you're interested. Fantastic. And if you made it this long in the, the conversation listening to LinkedIn, then you you sure as he- should he- sure oh, excuse me. Sure should be interested. And uh, and also if you're yeah. inter- if you are looking to stay ahead of that competition and if you're looking to stand out and if you're looking to create your business and your social presence and your whole life in general the best that it can and should be, then LinkedIn definitely needs to get on your radar. So if you ask me, it's not a matter of if you're interested in those five LinkedIn tips, everyone needs that. So the place to get those five tips is all the social.com forward slash LinkedIn. And as Marissa said, uh, uh, the place to look her up on all social platforms is at all the social. So check her out. Add her on LinkedIn, linkedin.allthesocial.com, and then grab that report, all the social.com slash LinkedIn, and then find out everything else Marissa has to say to help you out with your online presence. Maybe even some of that content coaching at allthesocial.com. So thanks so much, Marissa, for stopping by and giving us a ton of actionable advice. Really appreciate it and appreciate you. All right. Thank you so much, Robert. I I do appreciate your time and uh, we'll talk soon, I'm sure. Awesome. Bye now. Did you leave us a quick review on iTunes yet? It's quick and easy. Just go to marketeroftheday.com slash iTunes, click the view in iTunes button, and we would be very grateful.